Okay? Pope Innocent III, from 1198 to 1216. <clears throat> he was the most powerful of all the popes. He claimed to be the vicar of Christ, vicar of God, supreme sovereign over the church of all the world. He claimed the right to depose kings and princes, and all things on earth and heaven and in hell are subject to him. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, the guy, he had it figured out. You know what I mean? He's like, hey, I control everything. <laughs> he brought the church into supreme control of the state. The kings of Germany, France, England, practically all the monarchs of Euro Europe obeyed his will. He ordered two crusades. He decreed transubstantiation. That's the whole body blood, like literally turning into the body blood. He confirmed, confirmed the confession of the priests. He declared himself to be infallible, of course. He forbade the reading of the Bible. <clears throat> this is another thing. So this is like probably uh, number two on the list of why people were killed for, um, you know, as a heretic, because they actually had a Bible. And you're going to figure out when we read all these different things, why if you're a Catholic Pope that's declaring himself to be infallible, you do not want people having Bibles. I mean, that's, that's against what you want. All right? He forbade the reading of the Bible. He ordered the extermination of heretics, instituted the Inquisition, and ordered the massacre of the Albigensians. That's, those were Baptists. Okay? In the period immediately following Pope Innocent III, the Inquisition did its most deadly work against the Albigensians, but it claimed the vast multitude of victims in Spain, Italy, Germany, and the Netherlands. Later on, the Inquisition was the main agency in the papacy's effort to crush um, the Reformation, which we're not going to get into that. It's stated that in the 30 years between 1540 and 1570, no fewer than 900,000 people were killed and put to death in the Pope's attempt to exterminate the Albigensians and the Waldensians, both Baptists, Baptist people. Pope John the 23rd from 1410 to 1415 was called by some the most depraved criminal who ever sat on the papal throne. I mean, you know, he married several women. He had 200 maidens, nuns. He married nuns. He married married women. Um, he lived in adultery with his brother's wife, was guilty of sodomy and other nameless vices that we have to cut out of the list for G-ratedness. Pope Innocent VIII, 18, or 1484 to 1492, had 16 children by various married women multiplied church offices, sold them for vast sums of money, decreed the exterminations of the Waldensians. Again, couldn't get rid of them, couldn't kill them all. Sent an army against them, appointed the brutal Thomas of Torquemada as the Inquisi Inquisitor General of Spain and ordered all rulers to deliver up heretics to him. Pope Pius VII issued a bull against Bible societies and owning a Bible and reading a Bible. Restored the Jesuits and decreed that the Pope himself was infallible. All right? And by these infallible decrees, by the way, was not this weird thing that I just read you from the 2020 Catholic Church. They believe that whatever they said, when they said we're infallible, whatever we said is God's word. That's what they meant, is, is, is to be equal with God's word. All right? But here's the problem. There's no scripture to support the infallibility of any man on earth. I know this seems silly to even say it to you. Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. On speaking infall infallibly, turn to Proverbs 30. On speaking infallibly. So let's say that just even if that he declared his words to be infallible, turn to Proverbs chapter 30. Look at verse number 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words. 